Severe storms are coming back to the United States very quickly, and it's going to come with multiple rounds as we head to the end of this week and into the weekend, as we're going to have multiple of the tornado days to track from Thursday at least through Sunday. I've got a discussion of all the weather ahead, including the severe weather potential right here. Nation weather. As always, I appreciate you for joining me. Don't forget to hit that weather bell trial link down in the description for a free trial to the maps I use at many times throughout this video. And hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this content and you're not already subscribed. I do a lot of videos and additionally some live streams to answer your questions and keep you up to date on the weather. Now, taking a look at the pattern overview, I want to start off by looking at the mid-level jet stream, your 500 millibar jet with the European model. And what this means is we're looking at the mid-levels of the atmosphere and you can see that we've got a little trough or a piece of jet stream energy moving into parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas by the time we head towards Thursday going into our Friday morning. That's going to kick off storms late Thursday, Thursday night, and additionally once again with new rounds as we head through Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas being the primary states for those as we head towards the Friday and Friday night time frame as well. Look at this though, by the time we head towards Saturday and Sunday, a new trough, and you guessed it, this is going to bring the severe weather potential back as we head into the weekend over some of the same areas, and then pushing even more, I think, towards parts of the Mississippi Valley in the Midwest, a little bit more than that first system will be able to do. Now, let's play this out on Future Radar, give you a little bit of a better look at what's going to be playing out. First of all, as we go through to late tonight on our Tuesday night, going into our Wednesday, April 24th, some showers, even some high elevation snow showers there in Maine as we've got a little cooler dip in the jet stream over that region. That storm not going to be our severe weather concern, though, obviously. Meanwhile, we'll be watching some showers late Wednesday developing, maybe some thunderstorms over parts of Texas that could briefly go severe. But it's once we go towards late Thursday, this is Friday at 6, 7 a.m. That's when we're going to see the evolution of our next low pressure system, storms forming in western Kansas, western Oklahoma, western Texas, late Thursday going into Thursday night, progressing as we go towards Friday morning over a lot of the same zones in the southern and central plains. It's looking like this low is going to be strengthening quickly, and you can also notice some more of that energy back into the Pacific Northwest with our next system probably following closely on its heels. But again, this is still system number one that we're tracking here, moving over the central plains with a and renewed severe weather threat, probably again as we head towards Friday afternoon after our Thursday night threat. Some of it could even be from some of the existing storms that were ongoing over parts of especially Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas during the Friday morning time frame. Nonetheless, that low looking like it'll be weakening as it heads towards the northeast. Couldn't rule out some more severe storms over parts of the far upper Midwest and Great Lakes region Saturday, April 27th. But our attention is going to turn to what's back here in the Rockies, producing heavy snowfall, some gusty winds moving on out of the Rockies and into the plains Saturday morning here. Um, so that's something that we're going to be tracking very, very closely, and look at how that one develops, and you can already see the dark greens moving over Nebraska, Kansas, eastern parts of Oklahoma, and Texas by the time we head towards Saturday, late in the evening after a day where we recover from the last storm system, bring the moisture back north quickly, bring the warmer temperatures back north quickly. That's going to allow four more severe storms to strike, and potentially in a very intense way late Saturday, going through Sunday, and look at this, this low pressure system even stronger, pro progressing towards the upper Midwest, and it could even drag a stronger cold front as far north as Wisconsin by the time we go towards Sunday evening and into early Monday. Now, I want to talk about the severe threat day by day here, and let's start with Thursday. The Storm Prediction Center, as I filmed this on your Tuesday evening, having already issued a level 3 of 5 enhanced risk, indicating that we could see some pretty significant severe weather by the time we head towards late Thursday, and this is really into Thursday night. We'll likely be facing the potential for some very large hail in these zones. I'm hashing out some of it, maybe getting on up there to two to three and a half inches in diameter, you know, getting on up into that baseball size range. Also, some tornadoes, maybe even an intense one or two, especially there in some of those areas highlighted in the yellow, and especially the orange from the Storm Prediction Center. It's all as that upper level and mid-level jet streak that we were looking at at the very start of the overview in this video combines with this lower level jet. You can see those reds, even some of those maroon shadings on your screen by the time we head towards late Thursday night, early Friday morning. That's certainly going to help to fuel the severe weather threat as it will, again, be a very nocturnal event here and something that a lot of people will need alerts turned on on their phones for. So make sure you've got that. Check the emergency alert settings on your phone. Make sure those are on. Have a way to receive some sort of notification if severe weather does strike in the night. What I am drawing out right now, you could just see your warm front lifting north, bringing 60s very favorable dew point temperatures northward towards parts of Kansas, even Arkansas there. But you can see where the interaction of those 60 degree dew points and the 10 degree dew points is much much drier air areas there in parts of western Texas where those two zones interact. That's where the storms will fire on up right there moving out of the Rockies, a very classic plain severe weather setup. 
Obviously, we've talked about my O and W severe weather scale, especially if you've been with me before. It goes from zero to seven. One, two, three, you know, you're getting up there in the severe weather threat. But once you get to a four or five, that's when you're starting to head towards an outbreak. And here's what I've got on my O and W severe scale for Thursday, April 25th, 2024. This does include Thursday night going into early Friday as well. I've got a two all the way on up to South Dakota going back down to Southern Texas. But I think the environment appears, appears very conducive for severe storms late Thursday and into Thursday night, especially over the zones in yellow and that little bit of that darker yellow where I almost added a four in the dash line zone there in parts of western Oklahoma, north central Texas, and south central Kansas. Due to the model disagreement and lack of short-term guidance on this, though, as I filmed the video, that's why I'm opting to keep a 3 of 7 from southern Nebraska to central Texas, where I think people need to be on high alert for at least an increased severe weather threat with all hazards. That severe threat's going to continue into our Friday with this system number one. If you live from parts of Dallas and Killeen there in Texas, all the way and up there to parts of central Iowa, looking like a 15% chance of severe weather within 25 miles of a point, will be present at least a slight level 2 of 5 risk on the storm prediction center's threat scale. You can see the low-level jet stream and what I talked about for the central plains and southern plains as we head through Thursday night going into early Friday. Yeah, that's going to continue to push on off towards the northeast. If you live through parts of Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, all of these zones, that's where it's looking like it's really going to kick on up as we go through the day Friday. Notice that correlates right in line with where our severe weather threat's going to be, but also correlates right in line with where our severe weather threat's going to be, where the highest moisture is, where the storm energy is going to be created, and it's right along this cold front. Obviously, you can see the warm front out ahead of it through Iowa and Illinois as well, bringing those at least mid to even upper 60s for dew points from parts of especially South Texas and Oklahoma further to the north as the evening rolls on on Friday. And notice how that continues pushing back to the west and moving towards our next storm system, which we'll talk about for Saturday here momentarily. Um, as the atmosphere just gets quickly replenished behind any storms we get late Friday and Friday night. But Friday, I have put down a level 4 of 7 on my O&W severe scale for parts of northeast Texas down to southern Iowa, or up to southern Iowa, I guess you could say there. And the reason for this is because morning storms appear like they will end up persisting eastward, bringing severe weather potential with some clusters of storms as Friday rolls on. In addition to this, new development may occur along the zone through Friday evening and night and into the nighttime there with all storm hazards possible at multiple times throughout the day. That's why I've got a level four of seven for increased confidence in significant severe weather on Friday. Now moving on to the Storm Prediction Center's risk for Saturday. As I filmed this, we've already got a 15% chance of severe weather Saturday within 25 miles of a point from central Texas all the way up to Missouri. I think in this zone I'm circling right now, arguably it could be a 30% chance within 25 miles of a point because I think the storm energy is going to be really off the charts as we head towards Saturday afternoon. Look at this on the GFS model, really impressive. On a scale that goes from 0 to 6,000 on joules per kilogram for storm energy at the surface, we're getting on up there close to 4,000 in some parts of northeast Texas, southern Oklahoma, even moving through the eastern parts of Oklahoma and towards Missouri. A very nice chain of moisture, a very nice chain of severe weather ingredients moving to the north, and again, recovering behind the system number one. Now we're talking about system number two, of course, and look at how we could see storms erupt as early as the early to mid-afternoon time frame, according to the European model, on our Saturday here. So if you live in southeastern Kansas, back down to parts of north central Texas, I think that's where you're going to need to be most weather aware Saturday, April 27th of 2024. Not just for this first line of storms that the European model indicates and some other models are showing, but look at how more storms develop as we go into the nighttime. And of course, nocturnal severe weather is one of the more dangerous things that I ever have ever talked about here on this channel. And it's something that you'll certainly need to watch and you know assume that this model is going to play through and have a plan in place, be weather aware the lowest most interior room of your home or building just in case especially in the south central plains for saturday and of course with all that being said you could kind of tell by the tone of my voice yep we've got a level four of seven on the o and w severe scale for an increased chance in significant severe weather from north central texas to southeast kansas and southwest missouri as we head towards saturday and saturday night here a three surrounding that and a little bit of a risk all the way up in the upper midwest as system number one departs up there Despite the uncertainties in storm modes and you know coverage as we go throughout our Saturday, it looks like we're going to have an abundance of enough storms throughout the zone that I've got the three and the four of seven on my scale for that I have the confidence in putting down that four of seven. And it could include all hazards from wind, hail, all the way to tornadoes. By the time we head towards Sunday, April 28th of 2024, severe weather, including potentially all hazards, will likely be 
over parts of the Mississippi Valley and even into the Midwest. Remember, I was telling you earlier in the video that the second storm system is going to have the potential to move more towards the Midwest. That's why Illinois is more included in that level three of seven risk that could even eventually increase there on the ONW severe scale. All things we'll be tracking, probably discussing in future live streams, something you want to subscribe to the channel for. Another thing that we're talking about here, though, is the rainfall, and it's looking like we're going to get at least a, a couple of inches of it just out of the Friday and Saturday storms along the warm front and the cold front here from the Central Plains moving towards the upper Mississippi Valley here through Sunday early morning. You can see some of those reddish totals indicating two to four inches through, especially Missouri there in southern Iowa getting hit the hardest with some heavy rain, it looks like, according to at least this blend of models, which is something good to go off of. Hasn't been 100% accurate in the past, though, so even if you live in areas with lower totals projected, keep it in mind. Certainly, they're looking like the highest totals with isolated four to six inch spots will be from northeast Texas through Arkansas, Missouri, and into Illinois, and then obviously in these zones I'm circling now. That's where we'll at least be looking at the potential for some isolated to scattered flooding, especially if totals fluctuate. Something we'll again be tracking. Lots more to pinpoint as we get closer, and that's why you should, again, like I mentioned earlier, subscribe to the channel because I will provide some live updates and briefs in the community post section of the channel as well. Here we go. Wednesday, April 24th, 2024, in the 20s and 30s over parts of the Great Lakes for temperatures. Now we're talking temperature tracking, just giving you an overall look at what your temperatures will be as we head through the coming days. 20s and 30s over the Great Lakes. Well, we've got these 60s down here over parts of Texas and southern Oklahoma, parts of western Louisiana. Look at this. In the afternoon, Wednesday, if you're south and pretty much southwest of this line, you are definitely sitting in the 60s and 70s pretty comfortably for Wednesday afternoon. Very warm to even hot over parts of Texas, Louisiana, steamy with 80s, even some upper 80s there Wednesday afternoon in that region. By the time we head towards Thursday, April 25th in the morning, it's going to persist in being very warm over the southern tier of the United States, especially in these areas where I'm circling. Probably some upper 50s and 60s throughout the entirety of this area. Some spots there in those circled zones and along the Red River there of Texas and into central parts of Texas as well. We're going to get some mid to upper 60s. Those are actually record warm lows to start the day. Meanwhile, those zones are circled in Michigan, New York. Record cold lows to start the day in the 20s and 30s obviously cover sensitive vegetation if you hit your growing season up there. Thursday, April 25th, look at this in the afternoon, warming into the 70s over a lot of the country, some 80s and down there closer to the Gulf Coast and especially in western Texas where it will be even warmer in local zones. Friday morning, that's when you really start to see what these storm systems lifting northward are doing. You can see the 50s going all the way on up to South Dakota for lows in the morning, starting the day in the 60s over a lot of Kansas, Missouri, back on down there to parts of Texas and Louisiana. By the afternoon on Friday, again, even if I'm not showing your exact location and, and talking about it, you can still see the key and use the color code to see what you're getting on these days. Friday afternoon, plenty of 80s in those zones I just hashed out. Meanwhile, we've even got the 70s trying to creep on up there to South Dakota, parts of maybe even southern Wisconsin and Minnesota, especially there in Michigan, looking like it's going to be a warm day on our Friday. Moving towards Saturday, this is when you can really see how warm it's going to be in the morning to start the day. Over the Mississippi Valley, we've got plenty of record warm lows starting the day. Paducah, Kentucky being one of those places. Central Missouri, southwestern um, Indiana near Terre Haute, we could break a record warm low to start the day with 50s and 60s over a broad expanse of the country. Saturday afternoon, you can see why more severe weather is expected, especially in the south central plains. Hottest day yet that you've seen for a lot of zones with mid to upper 80s covering a lot of people. Uh, and you can see that even includes parts of Florida, South Texas being in some of the warmest spots. Sunday, April 28th, just skipping ahead to the high temperatures, then lots more 80s to cover. Means a lot more severe weather probably on Sunday, progressing eastward, um, the furthest east it will have been out of any event so far, probably at that point, in, in, especially in terms of an intense severe weather event. So we've got a lot to track in the weather department. Stick with me, subscribe for more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand videos. Hopefully this one wasn't too fast, it was easy to comprehend. That's it for this one. Have a great one, everyone. Always check weather.gov for your latest alerts from the National Weather Service.